All right, guys, everybody, uh, another video. Uh, this time we are working on a 2001 uh, Vauxhall Astra. This car came to me with uh, mainly two problems. Uh, one was uh, no speedometer. Uh, that was easily traceable to the ABS sensor on uh, front left hand side wheel. Uh, although this car is a, a non ABS model, it is still fitted with that sensor which purely fits a relay underneath the dashboard which in turn feeds the speed the speedometer and it feeds the the engine ECU with the speed zone. So that was it's easy to fix. Uh, the other problem is uh, when I turn, oh, apologize. Is the spanner light in there, which uh, doesn't go away? So even when I start the engine, the light still is there. Now. I've done um, a scan to the car and uh, it comes up with a... Uh, actually I'm going to show you. It comes up with uh, two codes mainly. Into uh, the Astro G. 16SE Oops So this is the fault codes Oops, let me try to So Someone has changed the pedal sensor on this, the accelerator. Now, obviously, that didn't solve the problem because the problem is another one. But uh, I will start with the pedal, with the, the accelerator, accelerator pedal, and obviously it shows there uh, sensor two voltage low. Um, then the car is in limp mode, uh, limp home, uh, and then it says one and two correlation. Uh, the one into correlation means obviously they are now uh, correlate each other, and uh, that just says voltage too low. So what we're going to do here, we're going to go back just for you to have a better idea. We're going to go to measuring blocks, and as you can see in there, sensor one it shows not point ninety six volts. I'm going to press the pedal down to full throttle, and as you can see voltage changed but as you can see on app 2 on sensor number 2 there's no change at all so this like I said someone put a brand new uh, pedal sensor so even though just to completely rule it out I've checked the pedal I've checked I measured the pedal itself and there was absolutely nothing wrong with the pedal well it's a brand new pedal so what I've done next was I've measured all the wires, all the six wires from the pedal, from the plug of the pedal, back to the ECU. And uh, all, all of them, they showed less than 1 ohm resistance, so nothing wrong in there as well. Then I've started to check if, basically on the plug, you have six wires on a plug. The first two wires, number one and number two. They are supposed to be fed with 5 volts from the ECU. And then obviously there are 5 volts. Then they go inside the pedal through a variable resistor. Which changes the voltage in there as you can see. And uh, <coughs> what I've found is. Number 2. Pin number 2. Or pin number 1. Well one of the pins. The one that feeds that sensor. Was showing zero volts basically with the ignition on you should have five volts 
on two of those wires, uh, number one and number two. What I've done to see if that would work is I've jumped those two wires so I could feed five volts into both and that one start to work straight away and the actually code went from the ECU. So I could kind of bodge that problem and get it going but the problem was the top one which still it says no present at the moment. Basically what happened is with the engine um, cooled uh, that code will go away. As soon as the engine starts to warm up that code will come up. Uh, so that one or these three codes here I could get rid of them but I couldn't get rid of that one and uh, that one unfortunately he makes the the spanner lie to come on so after with this with all this in mind with all the the, the, the checks I made was obviously that the issue was at fault and uh, what I found on the top problem when I've started to follow the circuit of the relay and all that is that uh, on cold I can even um, and the actuators I can even um, get the fan running on speed number two a fan relay two is for speed number two of the of the cooling fan the ra <laughs> the radiator fan and um, with the car cooled I could test it as soon as the car starts to warm up that code will come up and I couldn't actuate the fan I mean I, I could actuate the fan but the fan wouldn't kick in so that tells me that obviously inside the the ECU there's some dodgy contact in there uh, that it, it starts to lose contact with the heat uh, as the ECU gets warmer so what I've done is um, I bought a second hand ECU which uh, I'm going to put on the car in a minute but what I'm going to take through the, the whole process uh, of uh, how to get it done as well um, that is the pin code of this car I've uh, retrieved that pin code uh, using CarProg and the ECU I bought has been reset already anyway so I don't need the pin code of this ECU otherwise I would have to put the ECU on the car, retrieve the pin code and then go from there. What we're going to do now is, before we do anything, we're going to have to take all the details of the ECU that seals on the car, so we can then match these details, this programming, into the new ECU. So, this one, I don't even need to take notes, because it doesn't have cruise control. This one is an automatic, uh, there's no air conditioning and there's no ABS, so that is quite easy to go through. I don't need to record that one. The can configuration. Transmission control module present because is a uh, and that's it. The only other thing I'm gonna have to take is the the VIN number. So I've took notes of the VIN number, and what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna I'm gonna change the ECU. So we're gonna turn the ignition off, and uh, we're gonna fit this ECU in the car. So, the new ECU is now in place, this is the old one, you can see the other one was saying reset at the back, uh, so the other one is now in place, and what we're going to do is, we're not going to go into the engine, we're going to go back first, we're going to go to body, turn the key on, and what we're going to find is that the spanner blinks, that is due to the immobilizer now programmed to the engine ECU. So we're gonna go into Immobilizer 2. I think I think it's actually programming but let's see what's in there so read. It's not gonna be there, it's gonna be probably in programming, I believe. <laughs> so 
So secret the code, so it's 9407. So we're going to program immobilizer output or immobilizer function. Let me have a look. Uh, it's actually immobilizer function. So engine control controller installed. Press OK. It's going to press OK. Yes. So, so successfully programmed. What we're going to do now is we're going to go back. So the light stopped blinking because it's being programmed. What we're going to do now? <coughs> we're going to cycle the key, and now we're going to go under engine again. Now we're going to go under programming, program the variant, so there we go, so the transmission now obviously needs to be changed, so the ECU came from a manual, so we're going to put a automatic, everything else is still is the same, so program coding, successfully programmed, that's fine, program can, transmission control module, we're going to tell them that is actually present, perform coding, OK, and now we're going to do the identification number because obviously the VIN number is different, so the VIN number is all the same up to, so now 0, 1, 48, 25. Right. Okay. Now back. I'm going to go to fault codes. So we're going to clear these faults. No DTCs. <laughs> Go back, close. Now we're going to cycle the key. And I'm going to start the engine. And as you can see, all the codes are gone. So on the measuring blocks, let's gonna see what is okay. So we have voltage now. Let's gonna see if that changes when I touch the pedal. Yes it does. And I'm gonna leave the the engine to warm up just to make sure the code for the fan relay doesn't come up. But uh, it sounds promising, it sounds that that's done. And these guys is how you change an ECU on a, on a Hastra like this and uh, thank you for watching guys